Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi guys, happy Friday. It is January 22nd. It is Friday, so we got to start out on a light note. And you've probably seen the Bernie Sanders memes that have gone viral since Inauguration Day, sitting there with his uh, homemade mittens. Mm -hmm. All bundled up. Yes, we are smitten with the mittens. Well, now people here in San Antonio have photoshopped him everywhere. Yes, let's start with the San Antonio Library. He's, there he is standing, or excuse me, sitting outside of the library. It just looks like he's just chilling out. But yeah, this is this has been going up all over town and landmarks, restaurants, and universities. There oh he is yeah, there at the zoo. The at San the zoo, zoo with a porcupine. They're saying, watch the leg. There he is at uh, the Al Alamo <laughs> Plaza. Uh-huh. But Yay! he's just about everywhere you can think of. He made a stop here, although he looks larger than life mm -hmm. there. Here at KSET 12, even. Mm -hmm. And then even uh, the mayor put why not and put him there in the COVID briefing as well. With, uh, with uh, Judge Nelson Wolf and the mayor. San Antonio Museum of Art. Also over at Hemisphere. I mean, the guy is everywhere. He's everywhere. Did anybody oh. put him courts? Oh, yeah, LaGloria. LaGloria right there. Did anybody put him courtside at a Spurs game yet? I guess oh, not because we're not allowed to go, right? Oh, that's true. No, I haven't seen him there yet. But there, the library again. What was your favorite one? It was the one of him. Oh, yeah. It's one of the last ones. I don't know if we'll get to it. Uh, he's waiting for Fiesta. He was holding chicken, chicken on, on a stick. stick. Yeah, that yep. was my favorite one. Here at the Paper Tiger. <laughs> Can I see your ID, please? <laughs> uh, he's even, uh, someone had him trendy, sending out one of the hot new places in town, uh, Best Quality Daughter yes. over by the Pearl, uh -huh. the, uh, the Asian restaurant, or sitting outside food trucks. But you guys have been very creative, and these have made national headlines. There there's, you go. Best there's, Quality Daughter. There's Best Quality Daughter waiting. Probably waiting for a reservation because that place books up days and days <laughs> in advance. It's, oh, but here's it's, Trinity University. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Out there with the students. So, Senator Bernie Sanders. There you is go. An That's adjunct. my favorite. Oh, there it is. Yes. <laughs> I miss Fiesta. <laughs> what, what makes it is the crown of flowers. Yes. yes. It's all dressed up. But good job, everybody, with the Bernie Sanders meme. Uh, Senator Sanders getting some love from San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> yes, we love to see him here. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says we can expect to see large amounts of cases for at least another three to four weeks after another 2,500 new COVID-19 cases were announced yesterday. Our seven-day average is a little above the 2,000 mark. 17 new deaths were also reported. Well, med sites on the city's south and west side say they are not expecting new shipment of vaccines until January 30th. That shipment is expected to contain 9,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine. The reservation hotline for both clinics will open next Saturday morning. President Joe Biden signed 10 executive actions, including using the Defense Production Act to order private companies to manufacture supplies like syringes, requiring international travelers to the U.S. to receive a negative COVID test and a mask mandate. This is part of his proposed $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. The city of San Antonio has received $46.7 million from the government for rental assistance. The money awarded through the latest federal stimulus bill. It appears this could extend the life of the city's popular emergency housing assistance program for several months. Thousands of National Guard troops called up to protect the inauguration were forced to take their breaks inside a parking garage after they were ordered to vacate the Capitol. They had limited access to bathrooms but were allowed to return overnight after members of Congress voiced outrage. FBI Deputy Director David Bowditch is retiring. He has served in the role since March of 2018. It's not known when Bowditch's retirement becomes effective. Uh, when it does, uh, Associate Deputy Director will take over. And meanwhile, President Joe Biden has decided to keep current FBI Director Chris Wray. The president plans to sign a pair of executive orders today. They are aimed at expanding food assistance and launching a process that will require federal contractors to pay their workers a $15 minimum wage and provide emergency paid leave. International Olympic Committee president insists there's no plan B for the postponed Tokyo Games. It will be held as scheduled starting July 23rd. Said the committee is fully committed to making the game safe and successful. Powerball says one winning ticket for its jackpot was sold to someone in Maryland. It is the fourth largest Powerball jackpot in its history. No one has claimed the prize yet. The ticket holder will have the choice between taking payments over 29 years or a lump sum payout of around $546 million. And that's your 9 at 9. Never 
heard of Lona Coning, Maryland in my life. And until now. Yeah, now it's, <laughs> it's a kind of a household word now, isn't it? Yes, a very rich person there. Or I wonder if it's going to be one of those cases where they accidentally threw the ticket away ooh, or something like that. Ooh, I guess that's possible these days, but... Uh, I hope not. We watch and wait to hear more. Beautiful shot back towards downtown this morning. We've actually seen some sunshine. It's weird, right? Very yeah. weird. <laughs> the, there is some sun there. We're going to see a lot more this afternoon. These clouds are going to clear out. We're going to get these showers out of here. It's going to turn into a gorgeous day. In fact, if you like warm weather, today is your day. Look at this, 77, the expected high temperature here in San Antonio. We'll see some 80s on the map, I think, this afternoon. And uh, here's a look at the next couple days. So today, 77 and clearing, but clouds come right back in tomorrow. Some drizzles, some sprinkles on your shower uh, on your Saturday, and then some showers possible on Sunday. Maybe a storm or two late in the day there on Sunday. So the weekend becomes a little more active. There's a look at the radar right now. We do still have some showers out there. This is uh, kind of the last gasp of this storm system that's working its way through. Uh, we had some showers south of San Antonio. Most of those are uh, moving out and still some rain around Howitzville and just south of Gonzales there. Uh, temperature wise 60 at the airport 57 Boulevard 59 New Braunfels and again we'll call for those highs in the mid to upper 70s today mostly sunny skies northwesterly winds 5 to 15 guys. Justin, taking a look at TransGuy, there's a hold up right there at 281 at the quarry. Apparently, there's a couple of accidents at uh, Hildebrand and Bassey uh, southbound. So be careful out there and expect some delays. In your top stories this morning, a fiery crash ends with one person dead and two others rushed to the hospital. Several emergency crews responded to the scene, which unfolded on I-37 North and 1604 just south of San Antonio last night. Stephen Cavazos, where it happened. Stephen, how long has it taken in all for crews to clear that scene? Well, good morning, Mark, Stephanie. It's been almost 11 hours since that crash has happened. Now, we still have some crews that are out here on the scene. And now that the sun is up, we're getting a closer look at some of that damage following that crash. Now, if you see up there, we have a guardrail that went down. That's on I-37 going north. And then further down below here on 1604, another down guardrail. Now, according to San Antonio police, the driver of an 18-wheeler was heading northbound on I-37 before launching off that overpass and onto the center lane of East 1604. Four. Now, police tell us the semi truck was pulling a trailer which ruptured spilling molasses onto the road. Now, police say a van which was heading westbound on 604 at that time was also struck. The semi went into the embankment under the overpass. And that's when it burst into flames. Now, police say the driver of the 18 wheeler was burned beyond recognition. He was or the driver that is was pronounced dead on the scene. Now, two people who were in the van were rushed to a nearby hospital. We are told that their injuries were minor. Now, crews have been working throughout the night and into the early hours of this morning. We even saw them work through some rainy conditions to get this scene clear. Now, we are seeing that the scene is clearing up right now. However, the cause of the crash is still not known. Police aren't sure what caused a driver to drive off that overpass and onto the center lane of 1604. The identity of that driver has not been released. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Also in your top stories this morning, another man died in a crash overnight. San Antonio police tell us it happened around 1230 this morning, 1604 on I-10 East. An officer on the scene says a man driving a pickup drove through a dirt field right next to a gas station and was ejected from his truck. He died on scene. Police are still trying to figure out what up, led up to that driver driving through that field. His identity has not been released. And police are looking for the person involved in what they're calling a road rage shooting. They say around 630 last night on MacArthur View next to the airport, a driver cut off another driver. That's when both of them pulled over, got out of their cars and started fighting. Police say one of them pulled out a gun and shot the other man in the stomach. That man was taken to Bansy and is expected to survive. Police say the suspect drove off in a dark colored SUV. 907 in your morning headlines. A couple of black teens held inside a California Target store for something they didn't do and taking a political scuffle to a new level. A beer truck driver making an unwanted house delivery and hunting Bigfoot. Our David Sears is here this morning to explain it all. OK, hunting Bigfoot. A different reason why you might want to hunt Bigfoot. OK, N another reason to visit Oklahoma? Question mark. Don't give it away. <laughs> okay. you, you apparently you cheated and read ahead, didn't you? I did. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Good job, Mark. That's all right. It's Friday. You can do what you want. Okay, thanks. <laughs> all right, first, you're looking at cell phone video from a person inside a Target store in L.A. capturing L.A. Sheriff's deputies detaining a couple of black male teenagers. They've got their hands behind their backs up against the counter. The teens were walking around the Target store when they were stopped. They said they actually witnessed several other black men steal iPhones and then run out. But security stopped them when they were walking around and approached them. Other employees blocked the exit with shopping carts, and that's when the deputies arrived. The teens were taken out to the hand after their patrol cars in handcuffs, and one of the teens said he actually feared for his life. Uh, I was thinking I was going to die that night. I was I already had that mindset that they were going to either kill me or one of my friends. The teens eventually released. Target apologized and said they fired the security guard who initially stopped the teenagers. They said managers will retake racial bias training. A family lawyer says they need to do more, like change their hiring practices. The families of all the teens will file a civil rights lawsuit. All right, let's take it to the Czech Republic. Parliament having a meeting, and then this guy walks over to someone else's mic and tries to take over. And you notice he's not wearing a mask. His name is... Lambor Vol. Now, he's a member of parliament, but since he wasn't wearing his mask, they turned off his mic, and that's why he went over to the deputy speaker's mic and tried to speak. Then things got rough. Security steps in, tries to remove him. Pretty big guy, so that wasn't easy. It all started when Volm was warned that if he didn't wear his mask, his mic would be shut off, and that's what happened. The Czech prime minister got on Twitter to express his feelings. He said Volm's behavior, inappropriate and stupid. All right, we're now in a day of more deliveries, but this is a little over the top. A beer truck crashed right into a house that's happening in Charlotte, North Carolina. The cab of the Miller Lite beer truck ended up inside that house. The accident happened in the middle of the afternoon. The driver suffered minor injuries. Fortunately, no one was home at the time. However, there was a gas leak. So much for less filling tastes great. <laughs> As if there isn't enough going on around the country these days, an Oklahoma state rep has filed legislation to create a Bigfoot hunting season. There's a practical purpose. Justin Humphrey wants to increase tourism to his part of Oklahoma, so he figures more people might come and enjoy his part of the state if they're looking for Bigfoot. And, of course, you have to have a license to do it. However, he doesn't want Bigfoot killed, just captured. He also wants to have a $25,000 bounty for the person who actually traps Bigfoots. Hmm. Maybe they should call it Bigfoot tracking. Versus when I, hunting. hunting. Yeah. Versus hunting. Right. Because I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. violent. But. Well, it's kind of a outside the box idea for getting more folks into eastern Oklahoma. There's that. There is that. Yeah. If you want to okay. go to Oklahoma and hunt Bigfoot. Mm. <laughs> they didn't say what the price of the license was, though. But right. I'm sure yeah. Maybe it's pricey. Bucks. Yeah. Maybe we'll try fishing first. Thank you, yeah. David Sears. Right now, fishing, 9, fishing. 10, 58 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Dancing mailboxes in California honored the hard work of United States postal workers. Plus, Chrissy Teigen loses a tooth after indulging on some candy. That's happened to me, but with Doritos. Not fun. And for, for real? For real. <laughs> and the local program has allowed for others far beyond the Alamo City to learn to code and build websites. Alicia Berrera will have the details next. All right. We're going to have to have more about this Doritos tooth incident. <laughs> Let's check the markets right now. The Dow is down 175 points at about 31,000 even. Before the pandemic hit, students interested in technology were packing their bags to make the move to San Antonio for an immersive tech boot camp. Since March of last year, CODEP took their curriculum online, which has allowed for others far beyond the Alamo City to learn to code and build websites. That's right. Alicia Berrera visited CODEP and tells us more about the impact the program has had on a recent graduate. In a time where the world shut down and life went virtual, Tommy Cirillo Thorpe's career in tech was barely beginning to develop. Full stack developer, we can basically create web applications or websites or programs uh, from scratch or edit something that's already there or maintain it. Cirillo Thorpe is a full stack web developer. Okay. Hello, KSAT 12 from Coda. This is an exciting interview. But the lessons in tech were all taught online by Coda. A first, according to CEO and co-founder Jason Strawn. Before COVID happened, you had to move to San Antonio or Dallas and be physically in one of our campuses to be able to come and experience uh, CODEP. Now we are offering our remote program 
anywhere inside the state of Texas. The pandemic gave way for the company to become officially licensed for online teaching. Today is the first time I'm actually like seeing the campus in person. Providing the foundation and preparation for students like Cirillo Thorpe to intern or work for top ranking companies. Thanks to our admissions team, they introduced me to a gentleman who works at this company called Cognizant. It's a Fortune 200 company. This last month, what we were hammering really hard is um, building an auction website. So something similar to eBay. A proud moment for Strawn and his team who aim to make the tech industry more diverse. So we have uh, scholarships from everywhere from minority and tech scholarships, women in tech scholarships, pride scholarships. A lot of opportunities and Tommy is actually set to complete that internship in March and hopes that that will convert to a full time offer as a full stack web developer. And he says this accomplishment is one that he's really worked hard for and one that he also owes to the curriculum offered at Coda. And there are two programs offered. That's the full stack web developer that we learned a little bit about, but also data science. The next class for these virtual classes starts March 1st and they are still accepting those registrations. So a lot of options. Mark Steph, back to you. Good news. Thank you, Alicia. We spit at it live downtown. Just enjoyed just now. We had some rain in the area this morning. Mm -hmm. Appears to be moving out for now. Yeah, it's getting out of here and the clouds are already clearing. The sun is out here in San Antonio. I know a few people have been missing the sun. It'll be around today and then it goes away again tomorrow. Let's start with the radar. Show you where the rain is at this hour. Moving along I-10 towards the Houston area. Still a little bit damp out towards Gonzales and Howitzville. But that's uh, sort of the last gasp here of this storm system as it moves away. A little closer look at the radar here in Atascosa and Wilson County. You can see those showers are already scooping off to the east at a pretty quick clip. Uh, then some rain around Howitzville, just north of Yoakum along 90A there and uh, stretching up towards Schulenburg. And, and I think this will be out of here next couple of hours and all of us will be looking at clearing skies here soon. Uh, right now here across San Antonio, a little bit of sun out there, 60 degrees at the airport, calm winds, humidity is at 83% and temperature wise 56 Kerrville, 56 in comfort, 59 new brothels. So basically mid to upper 50s, we'll see some 60s here uh, very soon. 55 Carrizo Springs, 58 in Cotula. It's going to be a warm day. The air is going to dry a little bit and uh, we'll see those temperatures climb into the 70s, if not close to 80 in a few spots. See the dew points there in the mid 50s right now. Dew points are going to be kind of all over the map here next few days. It'll dry out a little bit this afternoon and then this weekend we'll see it uh, jump back up. Dew points will be really high as we get into Sunday. That's going to lead to a fairly warm day. And then by Monday as we get our next front through here, it dries out again. So a lot of back and forth uh, going on in this forecast. Visible satellite picture shows some of those clouds and there still are clouds back off to the west. So it's not going to be perfectly sunny as we get towards say midday, but we will see some peaks of sun for sure. And I think uh, it clears out even more later this afternoon. Nice cloud deck up across parts of North Texas. Here's a frontal boundary up there. This is another front that we're going to have to kind of watch and we'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, but down the line, here's our next storm system right now out near San Francisco. This is going to round the corner and uh, it'll be here by Sunday and that's going to be our next chance for rain. So let's look at the forecast here. I mentioned that front. There is a front that's going to kind of come in from the north and east a little bit later tonight and that'll draw in some cooler air. It will also help to fill in the cloud cover. So Saturday is going to be a cloudy day and then by the afternoon on Saturday, we could start to see a few showers maybe some drizzle and then on Sunday warm front moves through gets fairly warm. We're still going to see a few showers around, but any significant rain is going to hold off until Sunday night. And that's with this front uh, where it could give us a few thunderstorms. We're going to be on the tail end of this. I'm not too confident that we're going to get any really good rainfall totals out of this. It'll be sort of quick, but a couple of thunderstorms possible late Sunday night early Monday morning and then by Monday we clear out again. So a lot going on this weekend. High temperatures today up around 77. We'll call it mostly sunny this afternoon and then tomorrow cloudy 65. There could be some drizzle, maybe some sprinkles late in the day. Then on Sunday basically cloudy. We'll start off with some drizzle and then we may see some of those storms again late Sunday night, early Monday morning. Then as we get into the work week clears out. Looks nice 70s. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's a nice looking week next week, guys. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 920, 59 degrees. And after the break, this amazing footage captured by wildlife officials over Colorado. Can you guess how many elk biologists say they saw during the single event? 
Oh, excuse me, seven a single seven hour flight. And welcome back, it's 923. Amazing video of the will of wilderness to survive is helping wildlife experts breathe a sigh of relief. Plus Arnold Schwarzenegger channels the Terminator. Jeremy Roth explains in today's Take a Look at This. How many elk can you spot in this amazing footage captured over Colorado by wildlife officials? Biologists took flight to survey elk herd populations following a massive wildfire that raged for months. Fortunately, experts say the devastation doesn't appear to have impacted herds, which are being tracked in part using GPS collar technology. Uh, in case you're still trying to count, I'll just skip to the answer. One biologist classified roughly 4,200 elk during the same single seven hour flight. Well, it's a new day in America with a new president and celebrations of all kinds unfolded to commemorate the changing of the guard, like the massive fireworks display that lit up the night in the nation's capital. And while some celebrated bigly with a bang, others boogied, like these dancing mailboxes in California that chose to honor the hard work of United States postal workers with signs reading, We Delivered Democracy. It was put on by the UC Davis Department of Theater and Dance in Berkeley. And finally, all right, I just got my vaccine and I will recommend it to anyone and everyone. Come with me if you want to live. Arnold Schwarzenegger channeled his iconic Terminator role while getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Come with me if you want to live. The former governor received the vaccination at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles and urged all eligible residents to follow his lead and do the same. He later shared the video tweeting, I've never been happier to wait in a line. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. We were chatting before the newscast said, what would happen if the needle broke? You know, you're, <laughs> you're, you're trying to jab Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sorry, you're much too strong for this needle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think it went well though. It did. 925 right now, 60 degrees. And there's still more ahead on GMSA at 9. The perfect job for someone with a sweet tooth. The deadline to be a candyologist and how much it pays. Plus, a little fun, fun for the kiddos this morning. Katie Blake is here to tell us about today's science lab experiments. And the president and CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank's passion for helping others might surprise you. Max Matthew has a story next on GMSA at 9. And good news, the booth has just alerted me that those slowdowns on southbound 281 at the quarry appear to have eased up considerably. We do have a few vehicles on the other side of the highway. That is the side of the Alamo Quarry Market. We'll be right back. And welcome back, it's 929. The San Antonio Food Bank is a staple in our community. For more than 40 years, the organization has worked to help local families who need it the most. During the pandemic, the food bank's necessity has become more apparent. We've seen lines of cars reaching blocks and blocks, tens of thousands of families lined up early in the morning for those mass distributions and thousands and thousands of pounds of food handed out. We have spoken with Eric Cooper numerous times, the food bank president and CEO, but as our Max Massey shows us, his passion for helping might surprise you. Inside each one of those cars is, a, is an individual, a family, um, and, and they have a story. And it's, it's a story of hardship, it's a story of struggle, it's a story of need. And they're counting on us to, to, to be able to nourish their family. Eric Cooper has been with the food bank for years. In 2001, he actually became the youngest executive director in the history of the organization. But this past year, when the pandemic hit, the food bank and the resources were spread thin. And the need was a surprise, even for Eric. I'd meet these families that were so desperate, so anxious. Um, I, we just needed to do more. And I don't know that we're fully in a better place today, but I think I've been able to figure out you know, the cadence and the rhythms. The food bank was serving up to 120,000 people on any given day. It's what I signed up for, um, but I think knowing that that I live in this great city that, that, that hears the call, that responds to the need um, while we see the need. Helping families is a calling for Eric, and it all stems from his own family who fell on hard times. They were really worried about putting food on the table and paying the electric bill. And um, time had passed, I became estranged from my dad, but ultimately um, it put me on a journey to find him. After extensive research and on a whim, Eric got on a flight. And 
It led me to Oregon and just outside of Portland, I found him homeless. And um, it was really a miracle that I even was able to locate him. Through a series of asking people at apartment buildings, former employers, and friends, it all led Eric to a man living in an abandoned camper trailer that was behind a transmission shop. It shocked me at first. I mean, it, it was like, that's my dad. And I just remember getting out of the car and yelling, dad, and he just came running. It was a turning point, to say the least. When I did, um, it changed me. Eric and his family put Eric's father on a road to recovery, got him diagnosed as being bipolar, got him the medication he needed, and got him back in their lives. He passed a few years ago, um, but just um, no regrets. He was, he was in our lives and, and connected. Eric's father's story motivated him to step up and help out. He's, you know, walk this warehouse with me when it was being built. Um, he's come to see it in full swing and he knows, he knows he's the reason why I do this work. And um, then I continue to hopefully make him proud. When you see the thousands of people come to the food bank, do you think of your dad, your brother? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I, again, in that faith tradition, no one's a stranger that they're all we're all connected and so yeah I, I see him as a brother or sister a mom or my dad eric tells me knowing that someone could be in need like his dad and could be struggling to get a meal makes him want to help that person and this is how i really do love our city and i love our residents and and i want a city where everyone thrives and i find pain in the reality of the inequities that we struggle with. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with live cam, 61 degrees, warming up a little bit, and I'm seeing some sun. You are. It's it's mostly cloudy right now. There's still quite a bit of cloud cover out there, but the sun is shining through. We're going to see a lot more of that as we get into the afternoon. Let's take a look at the radar. There were some showers this morning. Maybe you saw a few sprinkles on your way into work. If you were driving around this morning, uh, that is moving away uh, out near Gonzales now moving towards Houston. That's uh, last piece of energy that is tracking through South Texas, at least today. A little closer look here at some of that rain. There is going to be some moderate rain moving into Howitzville within the next 10 to 15 minutes or so. And some nice rain just north of Yoakum. 58 degrees, Boulevard, 57, Tarpley 58 right now in Honda, where it's 60 in Castroville. And uh, we got to check in on the pollen count. It uh, is not great news today. Mold. Still high. It's at 4,130, but Mount Cedar jumped back up. It's at 1,680, so both high as we head into the weekend. Uh, looking at the forecast for today, 77 your high temperatures, so it will be a warm one. Northwesterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll have another look at that weekend forecast for you coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Let's take a look at Transguide right now. Bright sunshine. The roads have dried out out there at Loop 410 and Fredericksburg Road. There's I-35 at New Braunfels Avenue. In your consumer news this Friday morning, a new survey finds many Americans turn to social media to get their news. This month, the Pew Research Center released the results of a survey they conducted last fall. They asked more than 9,200 adults about the ways they keep informed. 52% said they got their news from social media at least sometimes. Of those who did, about a third of them say Facebook was their regular source. YouTube and Twitter were also big sources. Motorcycle safety may be taking a leap forward with a new article of clothing, Meet Airbag Jeans. These pants have concealed airbags inside the legs. Riders tether them to their bikes, and if they fall, the airbags are triggered and fill with compressed air. Live performances are returning to Disney World at least at one show. The park says the Festival of the Lion King. That show is scheduled to resume at its Animal Kingdom Park in Orlando. Disney says it will modify the performance to allow social distancing on the stage and backstage as well as audience seating. Park officials say it will start sometime over the summer. Well, here's a sweet job. The Candy Fun House in Mississauga, Ontario, is looking for candyologists. I may have messed up that name, but that's okay. That's cool. uh, it's a fancy title for someone willing to get paid for eating thousands of confectionery products. The position pays $30 an hour and is available for full-timers or on a permanent contract basis. Those interested in applying could do so through February 15th. Oh, nice.
And out with the old, one of the first things to go at the White House now that President Joe Biden is moving in, former President Trump's Diet Coke button. He used it to order Diet Cokes on demand. President Biden apparently doesn't need it. In your morning spotlight, the next James Bond film has been postponed once again. And again and again. No Time to Die starring Daniel Craig as James Bond was set to open April 2nd, but now MGM announced it's pushing the film back to October 8th. The 25th Bond film has already been delayed at least three times since the pandemic began. It was the first major movie to be delayed because of the outbreak, but far from the last on the list. Dave Chappelle's upcoming appearances in Austin have been canceled after he tested positive for the coronavirus. According to a spokeswoman, Chappelle was expected to perform Thursday through Sunday. Comedian Joe Rogan was also scheduled to perform at the show Friday and Saturday. He apologized on Instagram to followers for the canceled shows, but saying they will be rescheduled. Chrissy Teigen says while indulging in a late night fruit roll up, she revealed the sticky snack had yanked out a cap. One follower asked if it was a real tooth. She replied, Cap, but I loved him like he was a real tooth. <laughs> and you broke a tooth on Doritos? Yeah, uh, Cool, what, cool what, Ranch. It's That's been a while, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been about 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> yeah, just eating just, a bag, the snack size of Doritos, and just, you know, it just broke off one of the, my back teeth. Back one. Yeah, mm. not fun. Not fun <laughs> at all. Had to go to the dentist, yeah. Right now it's 938, 61 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And coming up after the break, an easy experiment that involves common household items. Our Katie Blake will join us for a little science lab fun. It smells like lemons in that's, here. That's a clue. Yes. 941. Uh, before we get to Katie's science lab, we have some breaking sports news. Legendary Atlanta Brave and Major League Baseball record holder Hank Aaron has died at the age of 86. The guy was an absolute legend. We'll have more on his passing coming up in our later newscast. Well, are you looking for something fun to do at home with the kids that has a little bit of science behind it? How about a little lemon chemistry? Meteorologist Katie Blake and David Sears will join us in the studio for today's science acid-based lab experiment. Hey, good morning. Good morning. You know what they say, when life gives you lemons. Mm -hmm. You make something That's out of all. Make, make a lemonade or, or an experiment. <laughs> yes, you can make lemonade, you can do a lot. Well, we're going to use them for experiments today. And so did you know that it is National Fresh Squeezed Juice Week? I did not know that. Well, now you know. And here we have plenty of lemon. So here is what you are going to need to do this little lemon chemistry activity. You'll need some lemons, obviously. Baking soda, dish soap, a clear cup or a glass, and some measuring spoons. Um, also an adult handy because you will need to cut the lemons and uh, squeeze the juice. So have an adult nearby to do that. David, don't worry, I already took care of it for you. You would be you. Don't worry. You'd so. Be adult. Here's what we're going to do. I've already done a couple things for you here. So okay. you're going to mix about, oh, I think I did two tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons of baking soda and about a teaspoon of clear dish soap in these clear glasses. And we've mixed them up. So I'm going to give you that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to squeeze our lemons. So we need lemon juice from about two lemons. So David, you're going to put the lemon juice in there because then we're going to pour the juice into our clear I glass. Suggest you so, put your glasses on before you start squeezing. Get to lemons. squeezing. Oh, you didn't put I'm your glasses on. No, I'm not afraid of no lemon juice. Okay. <laughs> if you do have a cut on your hand or something, it is oh. going to kind of burn. Great. Uh, <laughs> um, so we're going to squeeze our lemon juice. Now, I did think about this yesterday. If you have a. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> if you have. Your face is priceless. If you have a juicer or something, that would right. probably help. Well, I do good. not. So we're doing this the old the old fashioned way. I lost sight of my lemon juice. Oh, and if you want to use your leftover lemons, I've always heard that putting these down your disposal kind of helps to clear it out and freshen up the smell. So you don't just yeah. have to toss these, you can do something for them. <laughs> you can take off of your glove. Oh boy. Okay, so we're continuing to squeeze the lemon. I feel like Katie's babysitting sometimes. <laughs> no. We're continuing to squeeze our lemons here. I'm probably not being the most efficient, but I'm going to just kind of get through this quickly. Maybe I should have started this beforehand, give you the extra but it's okay. Yeah, maybe. 
because this is kind of can be kind of difficult. Have you considered a bottle of Country Time lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So the whole thing here, the reason why the Country Time may not work so well, even though it's delicious, is because we need the acid in our lemon juice to react with a base. And in this case, our base is the baking soda. So when you put an acid and a base together, they are going to work hard to neutralize each other. But before they can neutralize each other, a reaction takes place, and that's what we're going to see. Okay, I'm going to try to get one more halfsies in here. Here, and then it's kind of getting all over the table. It's cool. Um, one more half is in here. <laughs> this will go. How are you doing, David? Yeah, I got a little bit of juice in there. Okay, How I much actually got I quite have? a bit. I was, I did two lemons, so okay. four halves. Which and I, I bet, I bet it's good. So you think that's good? Yeah. Well, I spilled a little. <laughs> well, I okay. spilled a lot actually. <laughs> you spilled a lot actually. We'll clean that up later. So we've got our our baking soda dish soap concoction right here. And when we pour the lemon juice in, that's gonna cause the reaction. Do you care if I go? Ew. Ew. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do it. That's pretty lemony. <laughs> Kinda of sour. There goes, there goes. Woo you know what it almost looks like to me? It almost looks like the frozen lemonade that you can get at like baseball games or something. Oh, yeah. um, so that's our reaction. That's our acid and yeah. our base neutralizing each other. We've got a little overflow here. All right, David. Now that you licked the lemon, go for it. <laughs> Woohoo! There it goes. Whoa. There it goes. There. Would not drink this. Uh, just word of warning. Would not drink this. Uh, but it kind of has a nice. Lemony smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything's going to smell like lemons not, not for the rest of the Not too big of a mess. No, know, not too preparing. big of a mess, and it'll be kind of, maybe you didn't have enough juice. I don't know. It's going. Too it's much going. Well, Yeah. Well, I spilled some on the floor. Good job, David. Thank you. You can take all these lemons home. Uh, there go my glasses. If you would like to see more Katie Science Lab activities and experiments, those are all on KSAT.com. Just search for the KSAT Kids section. N none of your experiments have made this studio smell bad, but this one made it smell yeah. really good. It's nice. Fresh. Fresh. Very fresh. fresh. Lemony fresh. Good job, David. Yep. <laughs> Good Thank job, you both of you. Hey! <laughs> Don't do that. All right. Bye. Thank Ooh. you. Well, Bye. does the babysitter take a check? <laughs> 947 right now. No, no, le no lemons <laughs> over there. No, but it, it, yes, it does smell very nice. Very nice in here now. Uh, let's take a look at the radar. We've got some showers uh, pushing east of the area now towards Houston along I-10. We've had some moderate rain out of this this morning. We've got a few sprinkles here in San Antonio, but a lot of this is beginning to move away. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit closer on some of our far eastern counties here. Places like Howitzville, you are still getting some rain, some moderate rain, in fact, moving in this hour. Uh, Shiner, just to the south of Moulton, seeing a little bit of rain there, and just to the south of Gonzales, too. This shouldn't last much longer. I give it another hour to probably be out of here. And as we look across the city of San Antonio, man, that's a that's a nice picture right there. We've got the mostly cloudy skies, but the sun's shining through. 60 at the airport, 56 right now at Stinson, and uh, looking at calm winds. You can see the cloud cover. It's going to be off and on. I'd say probably through about lunchtime. Some thicker clouds maybe up to the northern part of Bear County, but uh, fairly uh, clear skies right over downtown. And then more clouds to get out towards Hondo. Temperature-wise, 59 New Braunfels, 60 at the airport, 59 Bernie State, 62 right now in Castroville. It's 58 U Valley, 59 in Carriazo Springs, and seeing uh, quite a bit of clear skies out near Del Rio, where it's 54. Dew points are in the 50s. There are some 60s, so it's somewhat humid. Uh, we'll see dew points take a little bit of a dip tonight, uh, probably low 50s as a wheat frontal boundary comes through. And then it picks back up this weekend and really picks up on Sunday. We're going to see a lot of moisture shoving in here out ahead of our next storm system. Right now across the state, it's cold up there in Amarillo, 26. There is a frontal boundary. I mentioned that. Kind of stretches across Texas. This is going to work its way through tonight, but it won't be until this evening. So temperatures will still have time to get plenty warm this afternoon. And I mentioned that frontal boundary. Uh, there's quite a bit of cloud cover right along it. Actually, some low clouds. And those stretch from Amarillo back towards Dallas. And then there's some of the cloud cover we're seeing. But out in West Texas, it is completely clear. Meantime, there's our next storm system. It's moving along the coast of California. It'll turn the corner and then work its way towards Texas. And by Sunday, it does give us a chance for thunderstorms, although we're going to be on the tail end of things. So here's what the forecast looks like. That frontal boundary I mentioned slowly works through this evening. Clouds fill in. So Saturday, cloudy day. We're not going to see much sun at all. And by Saturday evening, we could start to see some drizzle and some showers popping up. This is around 6 o'clock. 
Then the warm front moves through, gets fairly warm on Sunday, but still cloudy. We start off with some drizzle and then any significant rain is going to hold off probably until late Sunday night and early, early on Monday morning. You see some thunderstorms developing along the frontal boundary. And so I'd say about a 30% chance of some storms early Monday morning, then it clears out on Monday. Today we'll call for mostly sunny skies this afternoon, 77 the high. Could see some 80s on the map. 65 tomorrow and cloudy, some afternoon drizzle and sprinkles. 30% chance of storms late on Sunday. And then Monday, most of Monday, very early, we could see some clouds, maybe a few leftover showers, but most of Monday will be nice. 73, 72 on Tuesday, and 70, mostly sunny on Wednesday, guys. We miss the sun. Thank you, Justin. Good, Good to see, to see you, back. you back. Yes. Uh, tinks. <laughs> yeah. 950, 61 degrees. We'll be right back. <laughs> Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. This item is already one of our most popular, a new one-year Sam's Club membership. This yearly membership is typically $45, but not today. It's only $28.88. And you get this for free, the Sam's Club Seasoned Rotisserie Chicken and the Eight Count Gourmet Cupcakes. Now, there are some important details and steps that you'll need to follow. After your KSAT Deals purchase, you'll get a confirmation email to redeem your purchase. Use the link to finalize your membership enter your information and activate your membership watch for your confirmation email and once you've done this you can pick up your membership card at the nearest sam's club now be sure to read the email confirmation and sign up now to start saving lots of money the case at deals price on this 28.88 head over to caseatdeals.com for this one and many more good morning hey guys coming up on live it's our viewers choice show We'll take a look at live's best moments of 2020 that were voted on by you. See you soon on live. And taking a look at with Trans Guide this morning. There we are at 1604 in Calebra. Things looking okay there. And if you were with us at the beginning of the newscast, we had a little problem at the quarry um, and 281, but things are looking smooth there right now as well. It is game day and David Sears is here. Oh, we've real, got this. Real we've quick got, weather. Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, it's 64 right now. We'll be up around 77 and some clouds over the weekend, maybe a few showers, especially uh, late on Sunday. Now Spurs. It's game day and David Sears is here. Maybe the Spurs can uh, rain down some threes tonight instead of missing them all like they did the other night. Uh, <laughs> They're going to need a few tonight. Spurs 8-7, and seven, Mavs 7-7. Seven and seven. Spurs are 8th in the West, Mavs are ninth in the West. This is their first meeting of the year. The Spurs are coming off that loss to Golden State we just mentioned. And the Mavs are coming off a win. They ended a three-game losing streak. And then you got Luka Doncic, who is one of the leaders in all categories in the NBA. He had a triple-double the other night against Indiana. And he is averaging about 26 points a game. DeMar DeRozan, of course, with 20 points a game. Spurs have seven guys averaging double figures. So, like I said, the first meeting, 7.30, tip-off AT&T Center. They play tonight. They play Sunday. And then they play Monday. And they're back home for like five after they go on a quick road trip so it's Busy coming fast and furious schedule. it's like every yeah. other night Ho hoping for better three-point stats tonight yeah. 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 yeah hoping they're not out too much 12 yes. percent ain't gonna get it no it's not gonna get it real <laughs> quick uh we had the bernie sanders meme at the top of the show we've now seen him pop up in frames at cracker barrel <laughs> on cookie cakes and he's even yes. a part of the gmsa team thanks Ooh. to the viewer that sent yes. that this morning thank you for sending it you guys have a great weekend <laughs>